JP here, and I am joined by the one and only Sean Day Nine Pot, and we are going to be casting this PvP between Huck, a relatively well-known uh, Protoss player, and Pinder, somewhat of an unknown Protoss player. But uh, getting started with Sean, Sean, what is going on, man? It's been a while since we've done a cast together. I know. I mean, at the very least, you know, I don't have to worry about knowing my hotkey setup, because <laughs> that's one thing that has definitely punished me since the beta has come back online is just how rusty you get, even with just one month off. Really goes to show you how tough a game it can be. But meantime, just been doing a lot of videos, uh, still doing the day nine daily and that sort of thing. And I'm super eager to get back to casting some live matches. And oh, very first live match cast back there is Huck spawning at the top is the friendly purple Protoss and at the left. We got Pinder spawning as the green Protoss. Now, I know you talked to Artosis a little bit about Pinder. What sort of information do you have on him? So uh, Pinder is actually Artosis' training partner when it comes to the ZVP matchup. He actually said that he's probably around the fourth best Protoss on the U.S. servers. He, he is an wow. Australian player, so uh, those Australians really don't get too much spotlight in general in esports simply because of where they are out in uh, the middle of nowhere, really. <laughs> It comes to the world. They can't really go to and play on uh, the Asian servers or the North American servers simply because of ping in a lot of the FPS's game. But uh, StarCraft, ping doesn't matter too, too much. So uh, he's going to be playing here with a little bit more lag than our uh, US player, Huck. But uh, as the probes do go by each other, they're in the middle. I like Pinder's uh, little grab mm -hmm. on that Zelnaga Watchtower, though. Huck just opting to speed right by. So we do have players uh, scouting each other relatively soon here, and uh, really not too much uh, on the uh, gateway yet right now, as it is still quite early in the match. Yeah, it looks like both players doing a real early scout, getting out right after that first pylon. Uh, so generally the way players make up with this is doing something similar to what Huck's doing. If we look in his base, we see that he is already uh, making up to 14 probes before he throws down that first gateway, and there it does, it's going down. Um, so, you know, early scout sacrifices the economy, so they'll just make up for it by making the later gateway. And in this matchup in particular, Protoss versus Protoss, I think it has been the most expansion-scared matchup we've seen yet. Players do not like expanding fast at all on this matchup. Players like Noni have been opening it up a little bit by going Phoenix into expand, or Nazgul who goes three warp gate into expand, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot of one base crazy aggression. Yeah, as far as uh, mirror matchups go, Protoss, it seems to me, has been the one that's kind of uh, evolved a lot in the beta. Mm -hmm. uh, you did have a lot of Colossus, uh, Zealot type uh, builds at the beginning, and now you're seeing a lot of players like White Raw opt to go for these Blink Stalkers, which I think is a really great plan, and then uh, transitioning into Speed Lots, which really I'd like to see one of the players do here. I know you did a daily uh, actually recently about that. That was actually really informational, so don't go check that out if uh, you are a Protoss player who's having a little bit of problems with your PvP. Why, thank you. I appreciate the plug. <laughs> it does look like both players are uh, throwing down their gateways and their cybernetics cores relatively fast. Huck has gotten his second assimilator quickly, and oh no! Huck has taken Pinder's uh, extra assimilator, so Pinder, we see, responding by throwing down a second gateway right away. I'm very curious what Pinder's going to do to respond to that, because ordinarily you can't take the your opponent's gas too early. It's just a little bit too much money gets in the way of things, but that timing by Huck was just pristine. Pinder really should have had his second gas thrown down already. It looks like he is responding by getting Warpgate and Stalker up. Same thing going down in Huck's camp, Stalker and Warpgate coming up. No gas being mined yet by Huck on his right assimilator, though. Interesting to see how he's going to transition off of that. Yeah, we really haven't seen too much action uh, quite yet. Wow, Pinder, Ooh. a little bit of a big punch there. <laughs> yeah. He's grabbing all of his probes and just throwing them out in the middle of nowhere. But that probe of Huck was being extremely annoying on that pylon, even getting it down to 111 HP there, completely taking out its shields, and now it does survive and get back to its base. Here comes the first Stalker for both players, now pushing out towards the natural expansion. Looks like Pinder is going to hold his back. Uh, like Huck, scouting for that pylon there uh, at his natural expansion, making sure that we don't have any uh, super cheese coming from Pinder. And now Pinder does have to take out that assimilator of Huck's in his base. And I, this is an interesting little hint as to what Pender's doing. If you look at that bottom assimilator, only one probe mining. Now, if this is an intentional move, this is clearly Pender saying, I am going to early expand. I'm going to devote all my money to getting that Nexus up as fast as possible. We did see Pender accidentally send all his workers to that assimilator. It might be a complete misstep. Um, but there's only one probe in there. But, oh, no, it looks like uh, Pender did exactly what would have been the right move throwing down that Nexus right away. Still isn't throwing extra guys into his Gas Geyser. And it looks like Huck is trying to get a very fast robotics facility up. Hasn't really done too much with it. Is just instead making some Zells and some Stalkers. And uh, there's one Immortal popping out right now. 
So very typical one base play right now for Huck. Yeah, a little bit before the match, I did have a chance to talk with Pender, and he was saying that uh, this is going to be his first actual big show match. Uh, he did have one prior to this, and he said he was quite nervous in Game 1. So this is going to be a little bit of battle, or testing his nerves, I guess you could say, here in Game 1 on Lost Temple. We do have Pinder moving up with uh, four Stalkers of his own. He cannot attack Huck's units, as they do have the high ground advantage, and Huck is moving those sentries into place. I like uh, Pinder's little poke here, as those shields do regenerate, so not too much loss. They're not really lost anything there. Just kind of scouting out his opponent. Uh, we do have that first Immortal, as it is out, and a second one coming along right away. And it looks like Pinder is throwing down a third gateway right now. His second gas finally done. Huck's in a little bit of a defensive mode because uh, he has seen those four stalkers up there. But I just love this timing by Pinder. This is going to be one of those builds that I'm certain is going to get very, very popular quickly as players learn to defend uh, better and better. Just getting those expansions up super fast and defending with a slightly lower gate count early on, but then using the warp gates uh, to, to make up for it. Those four stalkers Pinder has in the center of the map going to do a good job of sniping everything that tries to move out that's scouting. But oh no, look at this. Pinder is going to try to move forward. Look at that. The Mortals just smash that stalker so fast. Pinder's going to be in a serious trouble unless he can figure out some miraculous way to defend. His third warp gate is about to finish. Two more uh, gateways just started, but I don't know if it's going to be enough in time. A little bit of a timing attack here from Huck. He does have two Immortals with a third one on the way. Uh, we do have Pinder actually engaging now with a handful of probes. Some nice force builds there, making a wow. single column in there. Sealing it off as he, does, as he does get a couple of Zealots through. And now Pinder's in a little bit of a tough situation right now as he only has a handful of Stalkers and a couple of Zealots to defend against this huge army of Huck, especially with those Immortals. They just do a ton of damage to Stalkers. And wow, another great force <laughs> build there from Huck, completely balking all the units of Pinder. And right now, Pinder is going to be in a really tough situation. This might even be a GG right now, Sean. I know, look at that, those three Immortals have done so much damage, annihilating all those Stalkers, and look at Pinder, has so many unit producing facilities, but good game, they just did not finish quite in time. I mean, you heard me say before the match that Protoss vs. Protoss is one of the most uh, expo dry matchups. Players really do not expand much in the early game, and there we got to see exactly why. It's so dangerous, all those early pushes that Protoss players can do. Huck chose to do a two gateway Immortal push, and it worked brilliantly. So need a little bit more solid defense, a little bit faster gateway count if Pinder hopes to stay alive. All right, guys, so that is going to be Huck taking game one here on Lost Temple, and we will be back with game two on Metalopolis.